Well, for companies, fewer promotions can mean fewer sales. Good food reported a nearly 40% decline in revenue last quarter. The meal kit company blaming a drop in promotional activity. Our own Paige Ellis has been digging into the story. This was one of those big winners early on during the pandemic. Absolutely, and it made sense because people were forced to cook their own meals at home. Many of us including myself, didn't have the skills. And so a lot of people turn to these meal kit services for inspiration and recipes and the convenience, of course. And, and, and certainly we know that there were a lot of promotions. Uh, Good Food has been very promotional in the past. I've opened many a package unrelated to Good Food. And you get and, these, yeah, little, exactly, yeah. these little, yeah. almost like a gift card, mm. like a free, you know, free for the first month or whatever the case may be. Good Food has decided to roll back these incentives and has been doing that for a little while now. They say the goal is to attract and retain what they describe as high value customers. And on the conference call that I was listening to with analysts just now, they defined a high value customer as someone who spends between five and $10,000 a year on good food uh, meal kits um, at, for, for to, to make at home. Oh, 10 wow. grand, okay. yeah. yeah. But I guess if you, if you map that out with of, your groceries. the meal kit <laughs> industry. <laughs> Amber Canwar may be up there. We know she's a fan of, okay. of these meal kits for the convenience uh, sake. The result of, of ruling back these promotions has been that uh, they, they've enjoyed higher margins. So Good Food uh, saw its uh, gross margin above 35% for the first time in its history. And that's really notable when you consider their cost inputs have gone up. We just saw the CPI numbers today. Food inflation is stubbornly high, but it also has contributed to a drop in sales. So fewer promotions, fewer incentives to sign up. Uh, we saw revenue drop about 40% in the company's most recent quarter. You noted that this was a bit of a pandemic darling, and you can see that reflected in the company's quarterly revenue. It sort of spiked. It hit that peak uh, in, in uh, 2021. Uh, also so that's when we saw um, the stock price peak, and it's been falling off since then. John. Wow. No, that's a helpful chart. And it just seems like the messaging these companies want to give to investors now is about healthy balance sheet performance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're not getting a lot of investor love for just having huge revenue numbers, Clearly, you want to focus on that bottom line number. Are you meeting your earnings expectations or the earnings forecast? It seems that's the environment we're in. Right. So the company's balance sheet in particular has been has been of concern. And, and, and their annual general meeting gets underway in 40 minutes time. That is probably going to be one of the chief focuses. Certainly was a focus on the conference call today. Uh, the company has had a tough year when it comes to their liquidity. Uh, in the fall, the company disclosed that they entered into what's called a tolerance letter. Uh, uh, um, understanding hmm. with their with their lenders because they failed to meet some financial covenants, so their lenders agreed to tolerate certain covenant breaches as long as they met certain conditions. So that's when we saw the company's um, stock price take take a, a hit. Uh, we also saw some ratings downgrades. They've really tried to rein in their spending. They tried to focus more, as we just described, on their on their margins. But there is a lot of concern about visibility into this company, not only because of some of those um, balance sheet nuances, uh, also because of the revenue story that we were just describing. And there's a great deal of competition 